standing here at KCRS 23 with the esteemed Dr. Bill Kalin. Uh, for anyone who does not know, Dr. Kalin is responsible for a lot of foundational research that has really transformed the field of kidney cancer, and we're so thankful as patients uh, for his work. Uh, Dr. Kalin has just given the keynote here at KCRS, and I've asked him, and he's been kind enough to agree to, to talk uh, to the patients about what to look forward to in the years ahead. Dr. Kalin. Yeah. So I, I think one of the things we've learned is the cancers where we're making the most progress are the cancers where we've really grown to understand which genes are altered, or scientists use the word mutated, in those cancers that are actually causing those cancers. So these are typically uh, genes uh, that were uh, intact when they were inherited from mom and dad, but in the course of the patient's life, uh, a, a rogue cell in the body uh, introduced an alteration or a mutation, as I said, into those genes, and that gene is now contributing to that particular uh, cancer. And, and so it turns out in kidney cancer, we've learned many of the genes that, when altered, play a role in kidney cancer. And at the top of the list is the gene we refer to as VHL for short, or the von Hippel Lindau. Uh, gene. Uh, but knowing the genes is not enough. You have to begin to understand what those genes do. And m most genes you can think of as being blueprints for making particular proteins that then do specific functions within the cell. So when a scientist says they're studying a gene, more often than not, they really are studying the protein that's made with those instructions. So not only do we have a pretty good understanding that, for example, alterations or mutations in the VHL gene cause kidney cancer. We have a pretty good understanding of what the VHL protein does, the protein made with those instructions. And we now understand why when there's a mutation of the gene and the protein is defective, kidney cancer is developed. Uh, and based on that knowledge, we were able to work with uh, drug companies around the world to develop newer drugs for kidney cancer, uh, the newest of which is a drug that targets a protein that scientists refer to as HIF2 for short. HIF scientists, of course, are terrible in terms of bad jargon and acronyms, uh, so I apologize for that. Uh, but when you lose the VHL protein or the VHL protein is defective, this protein HIF2 becomes overactive and is contributing to the development of these kidney cancers. Uh, historically, HIF2, however, might have been viewed as undruggable, meaning it didn't have the right sorts of nooks and crannies for a smart chemist to come in and insert a chemical that could become a drug that would then turn off that protein. But uh, fortunately, some very clever chemists have solved that problem. Uh, and so we now have a, a new uh, class of drugs, HIF2 inhibitors, in various stages of clinical testing. So we're very excited about that. Uh, but BHL is not the only gene that gets mutated in kidney cancer, and we're learning about some of the other genes that contribute. And we think, hopefully, in the not too distant future, that will lead to even more therapies. Uh, and then finally, it's been known for decades that kidney cancers tend to be fairly immunogenic, and, that, and by, that's a fancy word, but it just means that there was some indirect evidence that on occasion, the immune system could in fact recognize kidney cancer cells as being dangerous and eliminate them. Uh, and now with so-called immune checkpoint inhibitors and other new class of drugs, in some cases we can rev up the immune system and get the immune system to tackle kidney cancer even better. Uh, that's gratifying, but scientists always like to know the how and the why. And now we're beginning to understand the how and the why of why the immune system uh, would on occasion recognize kidney cancer cells. And if we can completely crack that code, there's hope that we can do an even better job uh, teaching and informing the immune system in a way that will make it a better kidney cancer uh, killer. So I think the two biggest areas of excitement to summarize are, I think, our understanding of the genes that give rise to kidney cancer is leading to new small molecule drugs that directly target the kidney cancer cell. Uh, and then we're learning new ways to engage the immune system to get the immune system to help us by eliminating the, the kidney cancer cells. Wonderful. And you know, one of the other takeaways from your talk was the power of potentially combining yes. novel agents together. Yes. Uh, if you can comment on that for a moment. Yeah, I think understandably both patients and doctors uh, get discouraged when they see patients who initially have good responses and then uh, quickly uh, relapse. But in many cases, those patients are being treated with a single drug or, if you will, a single agent. Uh, and we've known for decades uh, that if you treat a, a, a cancer with a single agent, uh, 
often that is met with resistance because uh, you, it's almost a form of evolution in real time. You, you begin to select for rare, rare cells that one way or the other have figured out a way to resist the actions of that drug. Mm -hmm. But the classical solution, and the good news here is there is a classical solution, is if you can combine several drugs that have very different mechanisms of action, the chance that any one tumor cell is going to have figured out simultaneously how to become resistant to those two or three or four drugs becomes effectively zero. So we are in a transitional period where we have some very active single agent drugs, but now we're starting to learn how to use them in combinations. And if I was betting, I would say the future will be to treat kidney cancer patients with combinations of effective drugs, and we think that'll lead to much more durable and sustained remissions. Dr. Kalen, thank you very much. Okay, thank you. Time. My pleasure.